Hello, and welcome to the Physical Therapy Owners Club podcast. I'm your host, Nathan Shields, and this is part two of my interview with James Savas. He is the current WCEO at Hands-On Diagnostics. He is a senior HR professional with specialty in business development. He's also a certified educator and executive coach, and we're talking about a ton of stuff HR-related that for me, it was the bane of my existence as a young <laughs> PT owner. I just didn't want to deal with all the HR headaches. So I'm excited to bring him on and share some of his wisdom for us PT owners and help us through this. Now, in the first part of the episode, well, James, first, thanks for staying on. Yeah, man, you got it. Good to be here. No thanks problem. for taking the time, man. I really appreciate it. And breaking this down into two episodes because you've got a ton of wisdom to share. Um, but in the first episode, we talked about the recruiting, hiring, and onboarding of a team member on, into our clinics. A lot of great information that you shared there, but we want to go through the entire life cycle of an employee's experience in, on our teams. And in saying that, you know, we finished off by talking about what it's like to onboard someone or train somebody to bring them on and, and to be successful. People who are listening to this probably have someone on their team where you said, is there anyone that just you'd like to get rid of? They'd probably say, yeah, I know who that is <laughs> or is there someone that life would be a lot easier if they just weren't around well, more than likely they have one or two people in mind so before we get to that point i you know i don't know if i've ever spoken on the podcast about um how to how to do an appropriate how to have appropriate disciplinary procedure you know a lot of people for example Pay, uh, and team member will, will come in late. Well, uh, do you handle that? How do you handle that? You speak to them. Okay, you spoke to them. Well, what if they consistently do it? Well, then what's next? Um, you know, it's important that, and when I have coaching clients, they'll say, that, you know, they come in consistently late. I'm like, well, what are you doing? Well, we said one, one thing to them once, but we haven't done anything since. I'm like, well, you probably need to determine what your procedure is. Uh, you know, yeah. so how can you guide us as we take someone through a disciplinary process? This, maybe their infractions aren't so much that they should be let go, but how do you, sure. let, how do you hold them accountable? No, that's great. Um, and I hate, to, I hate to belittle it by saying, you know, when I, I have three children myself, and you look at how I've trained <laughs> I use that loosely. Train them, um, yeah. you know. Uh, but when when I think any any good employee, we're assuming that that you've gotten good employees in here, right? Maybe not. Maybe you have some people there, that, like you said, that need to go. Um, I think a good employee, uh, again, they're on the same terms, same purposes, um, will take discipline and go. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, sorry about that. You know, yes. like, like the way you or I might like. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, listen, I screwed it up. I apologize. It won't happen again. Once you're told what the policy is and you're slapped on the wrist gently, you change your behavior and you fix it. Yeah. You, you apply the right steps to go, oh, yeah, bad, don't do that anymore. Or get the earlier bus or whatever. And again, I worked in New York and it's all about buses and subways. And sure, and sure. <laughs> um, Montana, very different. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, so that's number one is good employees, new employees, will be, would, should be, will be receptive to basic disciplinary actions. If they're not, I would challenge that they're not a good employee. Like if they give you lip okay. for bringing up, oh, uh, well, but Cindy, but she always, this one's, all, I don't care about them. We're talking about you. Yeah, if they start deflecting and, and well, going somewhere. It's about you here. You were yeah. late today. Um, so uh, again, as you can probably tell, I'm, I, I jump on, if, if I observe something I don't like, whether I'm wrong or right, and I don't mean jump on like rah, but I'll 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 communicate about it immediately. Um, if I see someone coming late, hey, let's go talk. What happened? Oh God, it was cool. Understood. Don't do that again. Can I have you late? You're a role model. Oh okay, or it's important. Cool. And then now, now here, here's the thing: if I see them do it again, it's easy because I can go, hey, you said you wouldn't. What, what's going on now? This is day two. Oh. It's, it's case by case but if i don't see it then i don't know right but i think yeah. on the disciplinary point a, a big part of it sorry about that a big part of this disciplinary point is you need reports to happen you need mm. all the staff educated you need all the staff educated that um writing reports is a good thing and that's yeah. that's fun that's a challenge because mm. i don't want to tell on her him 
you know, and I think, I think with professionals, it's a little easier to get them to do it than the administrative staff in my experience, yeah. not one for one, but most of the time. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think it has to start with the gen, the team understanding again on the onboarding side of this, understanding that you writing reports to HR or to owner or to me, whatever, whoever you're, your home you have on staff is important to me. I'm not going to tell them that Cindy told me you were late. I'm just going to say you were late. So mm -hmm. I think um, train, training your staff to, to know that that's okay and communication is good is important because now if I get a report that she was late a second time, that person, or that he was late a second time, then I'll go see them, right? And yeah. I know an owner in many of your cases with your clients, they probably are not going to go, hold on, stop. You were late, you know, they're not going to stop doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but I think even a comment, even I've seen, and here's a, a tip that I find on discipline. When you have, what do you want to call it? When you have, um, when you're thought well of by your staff, when you are an opinion leading, generally amazing guy or girl, you do a lot of good and they know you do good. They know you're there to fight for them. They know you got their back. When that's the case, you have a very high, uh, there's a lot of affinity floating around and, and you're and, you know, on both sides. Sure. All you have to do as an initial disciplinary point is withdraw a little bit of that affinity, a little bit of that care, right? Same way that when you go home with your loved ones, right? Mm. And, and a little cold, a little cold shoulder. Antennas, what? What happened? You okay? What you know, you immediately feel something's not right here. And, and I've had success training owners and myself as an executive, just withdrawing a little bit of that care, a little bit of that love for mm. the employee. You know, like a little bit of, good morning, good morning. Oh, they didn't like that. They didn't like I didn't look them in the eye. <laughs> but, you know, and, and eight out of 10 times, it'll prompt a conversation. Are you upset? Oh, I'm not upset, but you were late again today. So... That, that's one way to do it is, mm -hmm. is I think in general, you have to maintain that, that, uh, you know, inspiring, uh, high, high, you use tone, high toned individual. And then when you want to withdraw a little bit of that care, it affects them, and, you know, and they don't like that kind of as mm -hmm. a disciplinary step, as an initial disciplinary step. I gotcha. I, I really love the report aspect because I can't tell you how many times it, it came down to having to, um, hold someone accountable and I, and I can't remember the specifics uh, of the different scenarios, but I'd have to hold someone accountable and, and I'd say, you cannot do that. And, and they would say, but so-and-so has been saying this and doing this behind your back. I don't know how many times and you do nothing about it. And I'm like, they did it behind my back and no one told me anything about it. How can you hold me responsible for that? Right. And they didn't have my fault in that is that I didn't have a way for them to communicate things yeah. that I was not seeing. Good. Right. And so, and they, you know, I didn't give them that, that communication line. I didn't mm -hmm. throw them the line to say, mm -hmm. when there's an issue, you can report it to me and this is how you would do it. And, and so I'd find out after the fact, after I let someone go, They'd say, oh, so-and-so, when you weren't around, they would just take <laughs> off and get their hair done and show up two hours later, and what? like nothing was going on. I was like, when did that happen? Oh, yeah, that happened all the time. I'm like, no one said a word about that. How was I supposed to know? Sure. Um, so that happened often because I didn't establish the communication lines to do that. So having a report like that and doing the proper footwork ahead of time to train them in how to use a report and that it's not tattletaling. We're trying to do what's best for the business. Completely. Completely. Um, and yeah, yeah, that's, I, I, there's a sorry. way to do that. Right. No, that's, that's, that's great. And I think it is getting them comfortable with that idea. And I even, when I'm training staff on reporting, I'll even have them, I'll, one of the drills I'll do with them as a trainer on that mm -hmm. is I'll have them, right there on the spot. Everybody write up a report right now, something you've observed. But uh, write up a report right now, something you observed in the last three months that was not cool, that didn't yeah. follow policy. Yeah. And they ha that's their completion quiz, man. I uh, gotta see a report. You can't, I mean, check the, <laughs> you can't check off the checklist until they do that. Ah, you got a minute there. Uh, so that was, that, that, that was always, that's always fun. <laughs> interesting, um, I like it. Yeah, yeah. But no, I love, you, you need to have it. Uh, it's gotta be, it, well, one thing too that I, I would do with, with uh, you didn't know she was behind you, like you just brought up. They were behind your back doing it for whatever time is, I give them this example of, um, and again, again, 
the New York in me, maybe. Listen, if somebody was murdered, <laughs> someone did something gruesome and horrible, and you saw it happen, and you said nothing about it, and it was proven later in a court of law that you observed the murder, and you didn't do something about it, you are liable for part of that, what happened. I said the same thing, what I would say to that, that person that you mentioned in your example, and say, but well, why didn't you tell me that? Well, but you saw it how many times? Like four, why didn't you tell me that? I, I, would, I would be this close to disciplining her, him. Exactly. For not telling me that she saw her do it. You know? That's so, right, yeah. that's right. That's right. And so, you know, a lot of people talk, might talk about having instances in which they were, quote unquote, uh, disciplined or on probation or written up in their workspace. Did you have write-up policies and like steps uh, towards potentially letting somebody go? You know, you get sure. three strikes and you're out. Did you have step, a stepped program like that? Yeah, yes. I mean, I think you have to have it in that, that employee manual or that, that initial... Uh, in the employee that handbook be, that we talked about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. You have to, you have to communicate that there's, again, three strikes is generally what four, maybe I've seen three and four. Sure. Um, and again, with, with the asterisk that this is always case by case and, you know, sure. something severe, you're gone tomorrow. It's yes. at will employment state. I don't have to tell you why you're going, yeah. but you know, that's the legal side. Yeah. But um, yeah, definitely there was a protocol. And, and one thing that's incredibly valuable that so many people don't do with HR guys or girls, owners, anyone in between is, is, is write the reports like you said, but then file them. Like, yeah. I, you know, it'll be uh, an files. email, a bunch of emails they'll send because they don't want to write something, which I understand these days, I get it. Sure. But then they're not in a file. So when we want to we want to let somebody go, I'm looking for her name in an email, hopefully I'll find it or his. Or remember that was an email about, like you need that formality. There's gotta be a form, a policy, a procedure, or you're kind of in trouble as you can. Yeah. You can understand oh, i totally but, agree uh, yeah. I, I i highly recommend my, recommend my coaching clients like if you're gonna write somebody up and you know one first is usually a verbal warning sure and yep. then when it yep. gets to the second and third there's going to be written yes. uh statements and and outlining the infractions the when and the where and why and Perfect. both people signing off on that and it's a Perfect. very simple exactly. document right uh, so that they understand that they are being reprimanded and that you actually took the time to reprimand them. And that goes in a physical file folder. Um, yep. well, I guess it could be scanned and put in a Google Drive yeah, folder sure. if you want, but make sure, sure that's HIPAA compliant and, sure. um, and make sure that's there so that, what, so that you have your case. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have your case that, for that, why someone should be let go if you need it. That's completely right. And, and there is... Um, one of the policies of one of my earlier jobs in my career was you would investigate somebody or some area. And again, a report in an area, the clinical area is always messy. I want to know that too. So it's not just about mm. Joanne who runs the clinical area. I like that. But I need to know that the clinical area smells on every Wednesday or something, or mm -hmm. that the billing team's lunchroom is a mess or I want to know that the laundry's because, not getting done or you name right. it. Right. Like, give me some general, I mean, anything that they observe and I, I make it very clear, clear and clean that, that I want that as the boss wants it, what everyone else's opinion who cares. But, um, is what I was saying is, is an earlier company is we would investigate based on the fatness of the file. Again, this is when it was paper, this was date machine. Sure. but, but when it was about a thumb thick, you know, a half an inch or more thick, that's a lot of stuff in a file. Now, again, not certifications, not, yeah. uh, you know, your I-9s, but yeah. when that's like quite a personnel file. Why? Okay. And that would, I mean, if you have no time to see somebody work all day, which you don't, then that file, once in a, I mean, I would audit it once a, a month, once a quarter, once a quarter, probably for most owners, let's be, let's be realistic, mm -hmm. audit the personnel files. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh, you've had three in the, because no one in your company, if you're a small, is going to have the tension to go and pull them all together and interview the girl and fire yeah. her. It's not going to happen, yeah. to be honest. But, yeah. but if you, every quarter, you know, you go, I'm going to spend a couple hours and just look through all of my files here, mm. the personnel files. Wow, she's had three or four about, oh, but then she stopped being late. And then if she was warned twice, was she handled it for two months and then she's warned again. Oh, okay. Good to know. She—that's uh, good and bad for two different reasons. Sure. But I think the auditing of them, 
mm. and, and, and being the awareness of what's in those files. The typical owner has no time for that, right? Yeah. So I think yeah. putting in a schedule of a quarterly, I think quarterly is probably a good enough review of these files uh, mm. is valuable. Because you go, oh my God, that happened under my nose. You didn't know. But again, that's if the reports are in place. That's like, yeah. There has to be a process and a procedure. This is where the reports go. This is how I get them. Um, and I'm sure there's a, also a follow-up process. Like after they, after you have received a report, there's right. probably some communication that needs to go back to the person who wrote it to know that, sure. Hey, I received it. This is what I'm doing right. about it. I'm on it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on. Yeah. yeah. Um, sure. So they've gotten to a point, they followed through the disciplinary process. Or they did such an infraction that it's time to let them go. What do you recommend we do to get, let go of dead weight? So, yeah, what, what, if that you mean that's confirmed, and we're definitely letting him go tomorrow. This guy, okay. well, this guy <laughs> needs to be gone tomorrow. I've got so many people that I talk to. They're they're like, oh, I should have let them go like six months ago. Yeah. I never yeah. let into go anyone go too soon. That's for sure. Sure. Uh, sure. I I always wish I had fired them sooner. Sure. But um, it, how how do you let how do you get rid of them eventually? Sure. Let me tell you one thing because you mentioned it is every owner ever, I think every owner I've worked for has a problem with firing. And it's not oh, it's, totally it's not it's not a matter of no time to do it. It's a matter of, but they're gonna get better because you, you're therapists. Ingrained in your being is let's help this person get better no matter what the struggle is. Yeah. And here's an employee and I like him or her, and they're great. And, or maybe I, I don't have them for 10 years, or maybe it's you know, she's been at my front desk for 20 years. Whatever the situation is, um, I can't let them go, uh, but you should. Anyway, just want to say that. We, we, um, no, we would always blame ourselves. We haven't trained yeah. them enough. Maybe we haven't yeah, held sure. them accountable. Sure, 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 you know, it, when we were just making excuses, we were just dragging our feet. It was, it was good times when we got excited about firing people because <laughs> then we knew the replacements were going to be so much better. We were so much better equipped to bring on somebody who sure. was actually value aligned at that time. That's perfect. Yeah, and, and you mentioned that too, that I think you need, let me say this precursor, you have to have a way, you have to not be afraid to fire. You mm -hmm. have to have the recruitment lines in, so genned in, so rolling. You have a waiting list or prospect list or whatever you want to call it. But that assume, because you'll, you'll get worried, oh, I can't lose him. And then mm -hmm. you're in trouble. And then you'll keep him on too long but the place and you want to, want to can them tomorrow or whatever. Um, certainly protocol states that, you know, you can fire day to fire them, Monday or Friday, beginning of the week, end of the week. I always like end of week because oh, sure. end of week, day's over, no one's left, very few staff are there. They know what's coming or they don't. And we can talk about that in a second. Um, they go home, they have the weekend to sulk and cry and call everybody and tell them how bad you are and then whatever. But um, so I like Fridays in general. Um, Got it. Um, and, and let me say this too. When I'm going to fire, it's, there are a select few people that I will give a heads up on. And that mm -hmm. might sound funny. Yeah. But there are some, there are some call, call them your HR guy, call them your manager, call them people that were good people and things are changing in your company or they're aware of it or something's going on, but you trust them a lot. You trusted them for years. Yeah. And now you can have that talk. I, there are certain cases where I will say, listen, I'm going to give you two weeks notice. Now, this is a grain of salt here because that's probably 10% or less of the people you're going to uh, Yeah, I was going to say, that's a very small very minority. Small, mm -hmm. very small, yeah. but, but there is value in that because you want a turnover, a function. Like, yes. okay, write this up. And, and even if they are being candidates a Friday, always the version of that in a very small unit of time is, what, what were you doing in your area that I should know about? So like, mm -hmm. make, I'd make notes of like, okay, check the passcode and whatever it is. So again, same way that onboarding was checklisted, firing has to be checklisted. Um, it has to be checklisted. Yeah, Remove we had to checklist that because yeah, it was the passwords, it was the keys, it was the equipment that they had. Maybe it was a laptop that they could take home occasionally or an sure. iPad or, you know, we had to make sure we got all that stuff, give, have to. Get, get rid of the access to the EMR and the bank and the da, 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 da. you know, you have to have totally. a checklist so you don't miss any of those steps. hundred percent. And I think, I think it, almost two or one in half, because you need the one in front of the person and the one for after they go. Yes. Uh -huh. Because after they go is the computer, some of that computer stuff or before, I mean, if you want to be really on your ball when you're calling them up at five o'clock at four thirty, you kill all their access. That's right. 
no. before the hammer comes down, the axe yeah. comes down. But the one in, in person, um, I, had a, I worked with an employer in Long Island, uh, the New York area, and um, there was a question on, on, on an on a, a exit survey that always had to do with, were you ever, um, again, I, I love that they asked this, um, were you, did you ever feel that you were discriminated against? And the person had to initial and sign off. And it was many, many more questions, but that was one of a dozen-ish or something. I like it. And I love that because it, it no matter how bad that went, that firing interview go, that like, firing interview, exit, exit interview. Exit whatever. interview, I'm sure. Yeah, no matter how bad it's, it's going or it went, they said, I, and I, I'd have to explain it. Well, you're, fi you're firing me now and I'm blah. Okay, okay, I get it. We have our reasons for firing you. We can go over that again. But in your time here, have, it always needed a two-way communication, always. Yeah. It, you ever felt that based, based on your race, your religion, your age. sex, that you were discriminated? Age, right? Uh, I guess not, fine. It's just another, again, HR is so sensitive, as you know, to like that data. You need the data. And if they signed a document that said it was on good terms or whatever, just another like notch in your favor if it ever got ugly that you did mm. something about it you know so yeah. i love that but um yeah definitely a checklist a protocol you know go over the, their final paycheck protocol that's on mm -hmm. the checklist they have to go over that is it mailed is it handed to them if it's a sticky thing hand it to them yeah you know if it's a really sticky thing give them a few bucks a week's pay again all call the, depending yeah, on the, call the cpa or the payroll company and say hey yeah. what what check do i need to write today Right, to, uh -huh. to get them off and not have to worry it, about right. another one. Yeah, make the call ahead of time for sure. Uh, and some of those payroll companies, if you work with a payroll company, they need 24 hours notice to, exactly. to right. get a courier to drop off that yep. check uh, in yep. time. So it, it's important to do that. And then some of our easiest firings were firings in which we could um, tie their actions back to how, how they um, did not observe our values. So our values were professionalism, accountability, growth, and empathy. And so if we could ever tie their actions back to what you did, I hope you understand, did not exemplify professionalism. You didn't hold yourself accountable appropriately. We can't tolerate that. You broke a value. And so we tried to hold that, hold it to that more so than any particular action. But well, you know, some actions were simply un intolerable. Flagrant or whatever. Yeah, they sure. couldn't tolerate sure. them. But even those usually tied back to the breaking of a value, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in some regards or another. And so that made things a little bit easier. And if you've had, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you've had the disciplinary procedures in the past, they more than likely know that it's coming. Right. Yes, they're usually not. If you have, if, if they're surprised by the firing, then you probably haven't had enough communication with them in the past. Right. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. And, and those are always, those, those always stink, man. When you have them, them in tears, mm -hmm. they didn't see it coming. And yeah. you're like, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't see it coming. We've <laughs> okay, <laughs> you didn't see it coming. Yeah. yeah I it, there's, it, it, it was always so much easier when there was const, when there was communication even if, you know, some of our best firings were opportunities for us to hear their complaints, share our side of the story and say, you know what, you were, you were productive, you um, did well with our patients. Because of that, we're going to give you a good letter of recommendation as long as everything goes smoothly yeah. now. Um, in fact, we're going to help you find your next job. And so with some of our PTs, we'd start sending out emails to friends. We're like, hey, we had That's to right. let go of a friend. Um, you know, if he could, if you've got an opening, we would actually recommend them. They're just not a good fit and recognize that. Yeah. And right. when we did that, we were able to, uh, it, it made us feel good, but it also turned the tables to help them recognize that we weren't enemies. We just have to recognize that it's not a fit. No, I love that. And, and, and again, Hashtag find out what your state allows, of course, and yeah. all this HR talk. <laughs> yeah. but, you do but, need to talk to an HR <laughs> professional or an HR lawyer. That would be sure. probably smart. For sure. But, um, but, uh, but yeah, but um, at will employment, I mean, there are some states where it was just, it was protocol to give no reason. And again, the human in me wants to let them know why. Mm. But there was, again, this is so circumstantial. But, yeah. but, but the circumstance was that I don't really want to get into it, and it's just not a good fit. Not a good fit. 
not a good fit. Not a good fit. And again, you can you know, your value is great. Love it. The value, blah, blah, blah. sure. But, um, but, but I was here every day on time. You were. It's just not a good fit culturally. And what do you mean? That's all I'm going to say about that. I mean, I, I had it. I mean, it's, you know, I've had it as intense as the other side is I demand with a knife in hand. I demand knowing, with no, knowing you know. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I demand to know why uh, a young lady in marketing of all places, but she was like, she was not having it. Demand to know, I have the right to know why. And, you know, knife, closed, but a knife like, whoa, okay. Wow. So I got, I got appropriately aggressive with her. And not like antagonistic, but aggressive. Yeah. If you want me to read, to pull your personnel file and read you the reports on why, we can do that. Or we can just say it's not a good fit and I can write your recommendation letter. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Done. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, but I do love the recommendation letter. That, saying that in any circumstance, almost any circumstance. Listen, if somebody calls me, I won't say this happened. And even another, uh, to add to that point you said, is it was a short-term firing. If they came on, even up to a year, I'd say, and it didn't work out, and you're having this conversation, I, I have said a few times, you know, we're, listen, for all intents and purposes on your resume, if you want to put project or you want to put temporary position, we'll back you up. Oh, that's that way it doesn't, it doesn't screw them up there and they're looking for, what is this, one year, six months at Blah PT? That's what? Or mm -hmm. they don't put it on there because I'm the employer. What's this gap of six months? Well, yeah. instead, put, it, put us on there, PT Blah, I like that. Six month project, filling in for someone who had maternity. I don't care. Say whatever you want. But I'll make that very clear that, listen, we got you back. Um, mm -hmm. Again, it's PR. It's the other side of that. It's true. It, it's the, you're leaving now. Still love us as much as you can. Please. <laughs> Please. <you know. laughs> but that's that's a, right. very valuable. Yeah. You know, one of, one of Will's mentors, he, his, and maybe scrutinize this if you will, but he, he said, if you have a problem employee and they get to a point, you can give them three options. Number one, um, turn in your res resignation now and I'll write you a reference letter. Number two, we never have this accountability meeting again. You completely change what you're doing and you are our biggest cheerleader. If something needs to be done and we're asking for a volunteer, you're, you're the first hand that comes up, right? And if that's not the case, we'll immediately let, let you go. Or number three, we give you two weeks to or two to four weeks to find your next replacement. We're going to train them up whenever they're fully trained, then that will also give you time to find your next position. Um, but if at any time during that course, you cause another infraction, then we're going to just let you go immediately. So which of those three options would you like to do? And <laughs> it was interesting. We had a couple of those conversations and they actually went really well. You know, some people were like, you know what? yeah, I'd like to just resign right now. Um, I can see where this is going. So if you can get me a check by within 24 hours, I'd be happy. And there were some people who, were, who said, yeah, if I understand what I did wrong. And this is, it, it's all circumstantial, like you said. There are some people that we could do this with and there are some people who just simply had to go. But there are some people who, you know, we're not quite sure. You're, you don't seem like the best fit, but we don't like what you're doing we're willing to give you another chance if you're willing to take the chance. And um, that way it really didn't make any surprises uh, come along at all. They were kind of in, in, in control of charting their own course within our limitations, right? That we provide them. No, that's great. I, I, um, I like that you did that. It's interesting. I, you know, you asked me for my opinion on it. I am, um, again, it, it's dicey. I, I don't love it yeah. because I would challenge that if you're going to have the conversation, they shouldn't be there generally yeah. if you're going to go that far what have they done that you even having that conversation yeah um, i understand and giving somebody an out of like it's a it puts you a little bit a little bit at effect i, I feel because i understand yeah but but again if it worked it worked but again circumstance by circumstance um if it worked that, that's great i mean the way uh, it worked I, usually yeah. was they yeah. they would they would opt out yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, rarely exactly. did rarely did they stay on. So they either wanted they sense. resigned that day, or they said, "Just give me a couple of weeks so I can get my affairs in order." And we said, "Okay, you know, we just need to make." They weren't so bad. They sure. we just didn't want them okay. around anymore. And so, sure. but it worked out well when they just opted out. That's right. That's yeah, great, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I think you know. Again, 
getting previous, uh, prior, the prior the fire, prior to firing, um, if you have this evaluation time in where you have a nice regimented, like you mentioned in the last podcast about um, up in Montana, they have this uh, several months or year checklist of onboarding or whatever. Like if you have some mm. regiment of ongoing contact, training, enhancement, call whatever the heck you yeah. want, communication, then you're going to see this before it, it gets there. Mm -hmm. And, and you're going to nip it in the body. You're going to go, it didn't look right. And like I said, I think previously is if I, if I see an indication by a person they're having a bad day or they're late, any side of not going well, like that day, the next day, hey, what happened? Because you don't want it to get to firing, again, no. on the good people. Yeah. But, but you have to be willing to fire. It's like both sides. You have to be, like we said before. So anyway. That yeah, was exactly. And that brings up another point. There should be that regular communication because sometimes yeah. PTs will get so busy doing treatment that um, you know, it's commonplace to do some kind of, say, annual evaluation yeah. or, yeah. you know, employees very sure. much expect some kind of regular yeah. evaluation of their performance. And they want that. They want good feedback. And so 100%. creating that process for them is it can be really helpful. Um, but there should be also a time it shouldn't be a surprise to you and to them that hey over the past six months we've had to talk to you about this a few times do you feel like that's sure. handled do you feel like they got that covered sure. Sure. i mean all these things preferably have been communicated in the past and like i said not shouldn't be so much a surprise when the, when but, it does yeah, come I mean, up and it's addressed yeah yeah no exactly as long as we're not assuming that and we and we have like documented like we said before mm -hmm. documented that that the, we, we had discussion, or if it was verbal, it was just verbal, but I, I like what you said about um, employee evaluations. I think um, definitely as far as the regimen goes, 60, 90 days, whatever your, whatever your initial period is, one has to happen there. How's it going? Going good. Both sides, 60, how's it going? This 60 to going. 90 days yeah. after hire, right? Yeah, after hire, um, right? After An initial hire. like, how's it going? And yeah. then definitely annual. I mean, we would do it after the first quarter, and we would do, Everybody, uh, or I'd have the, the managers do their people, depending sure, on sure, sure. But it was a it was a two way. It wasn't like here's a report, read it. It was no. we sit down. I, I this is what I would do. I'd have the manager fill out their evaluation, and then in front of the individual, go over their points. Hi, so uh, on tardiness, you're great. We love it. It's great. On effectiveness at role, uh, you know. Remember we had that conversation yesterday, last week, last month. Uh, but I give you a nine out of 10. So I like open communication. It's on the spot. They're, they're going to observe upset and no. And, eh. and then at the end of that sheet, like you just said with the uh, reports, the person signing, the person, the employee now is going to fill out whatever they want. Here's a paragraph. I don't agree with any of this. This is garbage or totally got it. Fine. Sign. And yeah. then again, in the personnel file and you have it there. And also at the end of that, you know, also brings up, I want to raise, man. It's been two years. Cool. And then the, the, the manager in that case, or the owner, or the HR guy, whatever it is, can recommend, whatever your protocol is, recommend to the owner, hey, I think we should look at a raise. These are all nine out of tens or four out of fives. Mm -hmm. And she's been great. Cool. So I would use it in those two ways as a, as a potential review uh, for a raise, but also just as an annual thing. Yeah, Definitely. exactly. And we actually, we would have the employees actually fill out those forms themselves and turn them into us prior to the interview. Oh, cool. So, okay. so they would rate themselves on how well they did and how nice. well they exemplified their values, how they added value to our company in the past year, uh, how they've grown, uh, what have That's they cool. done to improve both themselves and the business over the past year? Uh, because those are the things that we would, oh, that we would go off of to consider a raise. Yeah, love that. It's good. So, yeah. Um, so cool, man. Anything else you want to share about letting go of dead weight? I mean, I've taken so much of your time. <laughs> I thank you so much for it. But is there anything else you wanted to uh, dot your I's and cross your T's? Hmm. I think just um, staying aware of what's going on in the practice as, as uh, best you can. And that yeah. has to happen whether that's a reports idea or a, a version of that, whether it's um, a firing process, whether it's an, an annual review process, you have to know what's going on. And, and either, either it's, it's like a, a daily rounds. Again, mm -hmm. just one last tip. Like there is a, there's a policy about an, a, an owners or a CEOs or a, a directors 
daily activities. And part of it is just walking around. Is it going? You need anything? How's it going? How's it going? All over the place. Yeah. Face, 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 contact, contact, contact. Cool. Yes, yes, it's, yes. It's 30 minutes, 10 minutes, depending on how big you are, an hour. But as a, a once a week, at least activity, just keeping the communication in. I think that's the big thing. If you don't have the communication, you don't know what's going on, then you're the complete effect of whatever the heck they want to do. They that's want to true. walk out. They want that's to true. That's true. Yeah. That constant communication is key. Yeah. Well, cool, man. If people wanted to get in touch with you, James, how would they do that? Um, easiest, I think, is email James Savis at Hotmail. That's a mm -hmm. double S in the middle there. Full mm -hmm. name. Um, cool, man. You, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, uh, myself, I don't mind any. That's anytime. Well, I invite everybody to listen to the first part of the podcast if they haven't yet. Um, we we tried in this to go through the employee's life cycle from recruiting all the way to letting them go and give you some tips and ideas along the way. You shared a ton of information in the first episode regarding recruiting, uh, hiring and onboarding. I think there was a huge amount of value in that. And then I'm glad we got to talk about in this episode, how to let people go. I don't know if I really talked a lot about it in the podcast. So hopefully it gives some people some ideas on what they can do, give them more confidence and how they can go about it the right way. Well, Thanks again, James. I appreciate your time, man. Yeah, Dave, anytime, man. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody.